the path that led me to here started out here when I went to college here. Uh, then I went off to graduate school at MIT, did a postdoc at UCSF, and spent 21 years on the faculty at Columbia University Medical Center in the Department of Microbiology. But uh, once our kids got out of the house, uh, my wife and I decided to rethink everything. And one of the things that uh, we thought about doing was moving. And uh, Carnegie Mellon offered uh, an enormous benefits in terms of interdisciplinary interactions, computational biology, uh, genetics and genomics, and so it was an easy decision. Our lab focuses on um, a fungal pathogen, Candida albicans, that's uh, the major fungal pathogen of humans. It causes both mucosal and deep tissue infections. Its uh, infections are lethal for somewhere between 10 and 30,000 Americans per year. And our focus is uh, in various aspects of biology and genetics that are relevant to understanding pathogenicity and drug resistance. So, for example, one major area of study in the lab is how these cells form biofilms, because that is a major route of infection uh, on the surface of implanted medical devices. Another major focus is how uh, cells interact with the oral mucosa and uh, with deep tissues. We have several projects related to biofilm formation, um, uh, particularly trying to understand the genes that govern biofilm formation and then their mechanistic roles in the process. And we started out with a pretty simplistic view uh, in terms of looking at adherence, and now we're trying to look at a lot of uh, other events that, uh, that uh, were, not, were less obvious but nonetheless impact biofilm formation. Another major area of study is uh, the control of cell wall integrity. So uh, the Canada cell wall is a very inviting drug target, and it's been exploited by several pharmaceutical companies uh, with a class of drugs called echinocandins. And our goal is to understand how candid cells respond to echinocandins uh, as a means to understand the basic biology and signal transduction, and also to try to anticipate drug resistance mechanisms, which if history is any predictor, will uh, inevitably arise. Right now, there are six postdocs, two technicians, one graduate student, and um, three undergraduates who show up once in a while. We use a lot of different techniques. We use a lot of genetic methods that we think are incredibly clever, and I'd be happy to describe them if I had about a day or two to go through them. We also use a fair bit of uh, microscopy and imaging. Uh, we do a lot of gene expression analyses. Much of that is uh, in collaboration with a group at uh, Montreal uh, uh, that uh, carries out microarray analyses for us. And uh, we have some in-house uh, methods that we use as well. We have published in PLOS Pathogens, uh, PLOS Biology, uh, eukaryotic cell, molecular biology of the cell, genetics, proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. That's, uh, that's probably most of them over the past five. Oh, current biology also. Um, we typically, everyone go in the lab goes to at least one conference a year. Uh, we uh, typically attend as a group the uh, Candida and Candidiasis conference, which occurs every other year. There's also a Gordon conference on, um, on fungal genetics. There's an Asilomar fungal genetics meeting that uh, takes place uh, every other year. There's the American Society for Microbiology meeting, the Microbial Pathogenesis meeting at Cold Spring Harbor every other year. We will be looking at uh, signal transduction pathways that recognize signals relevant to uh, interaction with the host and relative, relevant to interaction with antimicrobial drugs. I hope that we will be able to develop some, at least, uh, strategies to identify therapeutics that target candida albicans, uh, both um, based on cell wall properties as well as based on uh, biofilm growth. Um, and I guess the most important thing that I tell everybody in the lab is to make sure that 
they are having the best time that they possibly can and doing something that they feel is exceptionally important. And if neither of those boxes, or if even one of those boxes is not checked, then they need to be rethinking what they're doing. Virtually every project in the lab is a collaboration with, uh, with at least one other group. Uh, for example, uh, one of my long-term collaborators is Scott Filler, an MD at Harbor UCLA Medical Center, who has developed superlative uh, infection models for both oral and disseminated infections with Candida. And also we share an interest in adherence mechanisms as well, so we've interacted a lot over the years. I also uh, collaborate with David Andes, uh, at the University of Wisconsin, who has uh, put together a, a really terrific um, in vivo catheter uh, biofilm model in rats, and we've used that extensively in our analysis. Um, Andre Nantel uh, at the uh, Biotechnology Research Institute in Montreal uh, does all of our microarray work, and then the great advantage is we can call up Andre and get him to interpret our results for us as well, so that's been fantastic. Um, I, uh, closer to home, I collaborate with Bob Murphy uh, in this department on um, a protein-protein interaction assay based on a visual readout. And then um, we've developed a fantastic collaboration with Fred Lonnie, also in this department, uh, who's a, a master of imaging techniques and has been applying those to biofilm analysis. My lab alumni have gone on to uh, diverse careers. Uh, around four former graduate students are actually working in private industry. One of those is the president of an immunotherapeutics company, and one of those is a vice president of a biotech company. Um, I have about four former students who, are now, who now have academic positions. In terms of the preparation for working in my lab, it would be a great idea to have some background in genetics and some background in microbiology, or else be willing to, uh, to develop that background once you're here. Students who are interested in uh, getting a PhD in this field should really be thinking ahead about five or 10 years. And it's, it's hard to do, but it's good to get started when you're young not just to think about what's the immediate question that's so important, but where is the field moving? What's going to be important in five years? It actually takes a while to get some experiments done. And if you're always just addressing the question that's of immediate importance, um, if it takes you a little longer than you thought, you're going to end up behind the curve. I think we have uh, a really terrific environment uh, with a high level of collegiality and interaction among labs. I think it's very common for um, faculty to pop into other people's offices and talk about what they're up to and look for areas of common interest. Uh, it's been absolutely effortless for me to develop really superlative collaborations here with several of my colleagues. And um, it's a, also a very supportive environment in which uh, our graduate students are highly valued. Their training is of paramount importance. Their professional success is a major investment of our time and energy. I would have a hard time just coming up with one favorite fact. But I can tell you one thing that I enjoy thinking about, which is that in 1975, I took a genetics course here that got me interested in science and in pursuing a scientific career. And now, in 2010, I am teaching a genetics course, that same genetics course. So how often do you have an opportunity to do that?